Vegas. Got a pretty nasty cold. Got my PayPal banned uh, for some reason, but also had Nanu ASMR <laughs> put me in her video, which was insane. I also had some random crazy uh, push from YouTube, so shout out to YouTube on a random live stream. So, yeah, you might be new to the channel, but I do a long content on this channel pretty often. Most of the time, it's about sports, but if you do like long, long, long content, I have many, many, many live streams of me talking many, many different topics because I do Monday, 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 Monday night live streams every single Monday now. So if you are new, hi, I'm Jake. I do Monday night live streams every single Monday. Today we're talking sports. Um, a lot of talk about basketball mostly. Obviously, since you know football season is done and over with, uh, baseball season I guess is kind of starting up. Any chill season is kind of here. <laughs> also, maybe talk a little bit about some Premier League soccer and other sort of football matches going on. We have some stuff to talk about, and um, yeah, also on Monday. Soccer, ML 
this year. It'd be kind of cool to sort of like learn what's going around and maybe go to some games this year and take y'all with me. I think that could be pretty fun, but tonight we have uh, some basketball talk to talk about, and mostly because this is, man, this is like almost the end of the NBA season, which is totally crazy to think about because we just had the NBA All-Star game, which, by the way, if you wanted my sort of reactions and thoughts to the NBA All-Star game, I have a live stream that I did the day after the All-Star game. It was sort of my All-Star recap, if you want to call it that. You know, wasn't really the best, to be honest. I'll give you a quick one right now. Mid, 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 mid. It was pretty mid, not the greatest NBA All-Star game. Uh, obviously, Dame had a good All-Star game. He had a good All-Star game. Oh, he had a good All-Star weekend because he had a good All-Star game. Won the three-point contest. Um, I mean, geez, I think Shade and Sharp on the Portland Trailblazers also would have had a pretty good uh, chance of winning the All-Star uh, slam dunk contest. But Matt McClung won, and he really put some good, you know, vibes and juices into the new uh, uh, the, the, to being a, a new contestant in the slam dunk contest. Not only because he was new, because you know, not really named a lot of people know, but also do because he was a G League player, which is insane to think about. So wild that he won, but doesn't really surprise me all that much because you know, no one really tries in a dunk contest anymore, which is a, a video topic I could really make an old video about. But anyways, we'll move on. Um, yeah, everything else was pretty bad. Uh, the effort of the All Star Game was uh, just like a days ago, uh, lazy effortless and kind of almost do I want to say like disrespectful like I almost felt like it was like almost like an offensive amount of lack of defense and effort in the all-star game this year really bad the best part about all all-star games is that you know the fourth quarter the last moments when teams are actually trying to win that's when all-star games get really fun get like a fun effort in the fourth quarter this year like we always do we got nothing the entire all-star game so 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 sad but hopefully next year's a lot better maybe they change it up again this year's all-star game was mid and it, 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 even by mid i should probably call it not even mid it was it was bad so anyways regular season nba 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 talk Let's check out the standings for the NBA. For the NBA East, I'm just going to go through them really fast and then go back to them. First place, we still have the Boston Celtics. Second place, the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. Third place, the Philadelphia 76ers. Fourth, Cleveland Cavaliers. Fifth, the Brooklyn Nets. Sixth, the New York Knicks, 7th, the Miami Heat, 8th, the Atlanta Hawks, 9th, the Toronto Raptors, 10th, the Washington Wizards, 11th, the Chicago Bulls, 12th, the Indiana Pacers, 13th, the Orlando Magic, 14th, the Charlotte Hornets, and dead last, the Detroit Pistons, no big surprises. So, let me think for a second, I think probably... Biggest, I guess, story from the NBA East. The Milwaukee Bucks, by the way, 13 game win streak. Oh my goodness, the Milwaukee Bucks really trying to get back to the dominant Milwaukee Buck team, the lock in number one seed Milwaukee Buck team that we used to love. Uh, obviously, now health is back on the squad, which is great. Definitely looking a lot earlier than it did pretty much the entire year right now. I'll see a as well with the 13-game win streak. Bobby Portis might be winning sixth man of the year, which is pretty insane. And, you know, I think that team is finally starting to find its groove, starting to find its probably rotation that's probably going to be played through the NBA playoffs and maybe even find themselves in the NBA Finals. I don't know, but uh, totally like can predict it right now. And then also... The New York Knicks, I think, are also a topic that are probably going to be big, big, big headlines on for the NBA East. Five-game win streak, sixth place right now in the East. Not even in a play-in scenario anymore. If they finish sixth, they don't have to do a play-in game. And man, how tragic would it be if the Knicks made it to the seventh seed and then lost both of their play-in games? Oh my god, the city of New York would be... Uh, on fire, and not for good reasons. Um, but I think they'll be okay. I, I, I can really see them finishing probably fourth, no, sorry, fifth, 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 sorry, fifth, 
with uh, with the Brooklyn Nets dropping a little bit. I think the Brooklyn Nets will actually still they'll, they'll definitely be a playing team. I don't think like the Wizards or the Bulls are going to be able to catch them slash the, the Nets just being that bad. Maybe they'll tank. I don't know, but they have to tank really hard to drop out of being even in a playing scenario, but um, I don't think they're going to win in to the playoffs. But the Nets, I think, are going to be dropping, so the Knicks could definitely be a fifth seed team, which would be pretty insane. And honestly, let's just say they go up against the Cleveland Cavaliers in the first round of the playoffs. You know, that's not a bad matchup. I mean, obviously, the Cavaliers are, are kind of a dark horse team that could be, you know, in the conference finals or first round out. They're still kind of fighting their way in the league right now because they're still kind of young with their stars. But boy, oh boy. The Knicks could definitely find themselves in the second round if the sort of matchups bode well. And the Miami Heat are starting to click a little bit together again, still in the seventh seed. Could, you know, move past the Knicks if you find themselves on a couple game win streak. Again, if the Nets fall further enough, it's kind of interesting in the East. But of course, in the East, you got the Celtics, you got the Bucks, you got the Sixers. Those are the, the three guys who are going to be, you know, only one at oh, I guess one, obviously one of them can make it to the finals, but only two of them can make it to the conference finals. Who's the odd man out? Is it the Sixers? Do the Celtics flop? Does the Bucks' injury issues come into play again? I'll knock on wood for them right now. Man, it could be kind of interesting to see who's the odd man out. In my opinion, oh man. Like, I'm, I'm always like a believer in the Sixers. I probably say every year, like, the Sixers could win the title. The Sixers could, the Sixers could win the title. And obviously, they can. They have a star player. They have good guys uh, supporting him with Tyrese Maxey and James Harden. Even their other guys, like, uh, you know, Tobias Harris, the defense of B.J. Tucker. They have guys there. Man, they somehow, they, they, they somehow always manage to find a way to just miss it barely. And, um, you know, if they do go up against a Boston Celtics like team, if they do go up against a Milwaukee Bucks team in the second round, that, that'll be, that'd be pretty tough, because let's say the playoffs started today, as the three seed, they would face the winner of, I think it would be, um, they would, they would play the Knicks, and then, I think they play the winners of two and seven, which would be, let's just say, but they so they would play the Bucks in the second round. Oh my god, that's that's tough, man. That's really, really, really tough. Um, can they do it? Yes. Would I bet money on it? No, but they would really have to prove themselves in order for that to happen. But I, I still believe that the Sixers are a title contending team. But man, that path is really tough. And obviously the Celtics, they would be playing the winners, I guess technically right now, hypothetically, the winners of the, the Cavs and the Nets, which I guess something like that have, well, I would heavily favor them over the, the, the Cavaliers, but I would favor them. Be a tough matchup, but obviously the defense, the perimeter defense the Boston Celtics have is pretty, it's, it's a pretty good game plan. And sort, of, sort, of, sort of keep those guys of Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland in a, in a bubble. So I'd probably favor the Celtics. But man, um, also, Kind of something that happened was the firing of the Atlanta Hawks head coach, Nate McMillan. Shout out to Portland legend, Nate McMillan. Kind of funny, but, you know, he did good for them to start everything out. But you could definitely see once a team started to figure out what Nate McMillan and the Atlanta Hawks were doing after they sort of made their new change after firing their previous head coach. And the Atlanta Hawks obviously went on that conference finals run, and everyone was like, okay, we're here. Here's Trey Young, here's this young team, they're, they're the, the up-and-coming team in the East, and then didn't really do anything else after that, after, after, after that. They kind of got stagnant and even got a little worse, so now he's out. Now I'm assuming probably some new head coach is going to come in, I think it's Gwen Snyder, I think it's the store reports, and a an whole new game plan surrounding, I'm assuming Trey Young is going to be made up. We're going to see if teams can really, you know, adapt to this new Atlanta Hawk team and of play that can be playing with the new head coach uh, as quickly as it did with uh, Nate McMillan because honestly with Nate McMillan it was good for uh, about a season and then everyone found out what they were doing and it was kind of GG so hopefully there's more success coming there and probably some changes some trades gotta keep Trey Young happy because
because obviously, you know, reports are, which obviously reports are stupid, but you know, Trey Young could ask out, Trey Young could be traded, Trey Young this, Trey Young that, Trey Young leaving. It is a possibility, but nothing too crazy. I've never really heard. Maybe he said it before that Trey Young wants to stay in Atlanta. Um, you know, obviously if this, the, the Atlanta Hawks, you know, make the playoffs, but they're going up against either the Celtics or the Bucks in the first round, like they're, they're that's a GG, you're a first round out. Oh uh, man, that's tough. And also with the rise of the Cavaliers now, kind of taking your, your spot where you were supposed to be, you know, the up and coming young team with a bunch of good, almost all-star guys, you know, it seems like Cleveland's there now. I don't know, but they can still be good. I can still see them being like a fifth seed next year. They sort of build well together, and Quinn Snyder works out. They're, they they have the potential to do it, but will they? I have no idea. Man, um, anything else really going on? Not really. I mean, I'm very surprised that neither Zach or Demar or even Vucevic got traded during the NBA trade deadline. I was pretty almost certain that the Bulls were going to blow it up this season. I guess not. Definitely going to see this offseason, though, if they keep this sort of trio together. I'm assuming they're going to try to find upgrades, maybe try to find a way to make it work, but the Chicago Bulls, I feel for you guys, a team that looks good on paper, has what it takes, but just can't get it done. As a Blazer fan, I, I, I feel your pain, and we're kind of on the same boat right now, just not reaching our max potential with an okay squad on paper, but I know my God, Lonzo Ball, too, missing the entire season, like, man, not fun to be a Bulls fan, I'll tell you that. Anything else I can really go off of? Not really. Um, I'm excited for the playoffs for the East. Uh, like I said, the three-headed race and then this, the little dark horse of Cleveland being there, I think it's kind of exciting. And just seeing what teams like the Knicks can do, if the Heat could upset a team, obviously the Heat are probably, besides the Cavaliers, are one of the biggest X-Factors. Can they become that 2020 team? Can they upset, you know, a Milwaukee Bucks or a Boss Celtics team? They have what it takes. Obviously, they have, you know, pretty much the same core of guys who made the finals and, you know, already overtook some of those big-time teams. But uh, the bench, in my opinion, still isn't that great. They did pick up Kevin Love, but, like, that's not going to be, like, pushing the meter to them being, like, uh, um, you know, as competitive as they used to be. But they can do it. Maybe. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, let's go to the, the Western Conference now. Okay, so for the NBA West, we have the Denver Nuggets in the first place, the Memphis Grizzlies in second, the Sacramento Kings still in third, the Phoenix Suns in fourth, the LA Clippers in fifth, the Dallas Mavericks in sixth, the Golden State Warriors in seventh, the Minnesota Timberwolves in eighth, uh, the Utah Jazz in ninth. Pelicans in 10th, the Thunder in 11th, the Blazers in 12th, the Lakers in 13th, the Spurs in 14th, the Rockets did last, did, did, did last in 15th with the worst record in the NBA. So, um, oh, excuse me. Let's see. Main storyline for the West so far. Oh, I don't know. I guess it would be still be like Kevin Durant making his appearance as a newly acquired Phoenix Suns player. That would probably still be like the headline of the West. Other than that, I can't really think of really anything. I mean, I think Denver may, you know, you know, knock on wood, have locked in at the one seed right now. They are five games ahead of the Nuggets, uh, five games ahead of the Grizzlies. And I think that's kind of surprising. I mean, I think I had it. I have Denver as the one seed at the start of the year this year. I think I had Denver as, as the one seed this year. I think I did. I don't remember. But, you know, I've always been a big supporter of Denver, of Jokic, of, you know, the, the three-headed-ish monster that they have there with Jokic, Murray, and MBJ. Obviously, just took them all to be healthy, which they finally all are now. And, you know, the role players are role-playing. And, uh, you know... They're, they're getting the job done this year, but are they true contenders? In my opinion, yes. Would I bet money for them to win it all? Probably not, but to make the finals, I think they definitely can. Um, and I think they're pretty much destined, they're bound to be in the conference finals this year, one of the two teams. The other spot, though, I think it's kind of up for grabs, unless... The Phoenix Suns, uh, you know, health stays afloat, which is kind of a good little transition to them. And talking about playoffs, boy, the Phoenix Suns could really be super dominant. And it's kind of scary how stacked that team is, you know, top-heavy with 
that's insane. And then they also got T.J. Warren from the Kevin Durant trade, which, God, that's kind of cheesy, but eh, it is what it is. I guess they gotta make the contract match or whatever, but, you know, that team is, is still pretty fire right now, and man, if Aiden can really, you know, hit his stride like he did back in 2021 when they played the Bucks in the finals and Chris Paul can stay healthy for the entire playoffs, man, that team could, you know, I don't want to say they could sweep in the playoffs, but they could maybe only lose like two or three games all the way up to like the Western Conference Finals. Like that's the potential that they have right now. They would play, oh, actually, right now they would play the Clippers in the first round, which, man, you got Paul, George, and Kawhi to worry about Booker and, and uh, uh, Kevin Durant. Why, oh, man, that's a... Definitely would also depend a lot on health, which I guess maybe could be the big boom, boom, boom uh, flare of the playoffs for the West. Health. Probably whoever has the healthiest team going into the playoffs and coming out of the playoffs will probably be the best team. And that's obviously like a Nota thing, but like the Suns, the Clippers, I mean, geez, even the Lakers if AD and LeBron are fully, fully, fully healthy. They could be a team that could upset some team, uh, some guys. That's that's pretty wild to think about, but it's possible. But anyways, uh, I think, of course, sort of like what I talked about with the East for the West. Denver, for sure. Suns, for sure. Um, then we get to the iffies, and I think there are a lot more iffies in the West than there are for the East. In my opinion, I'm not very sure I'm bucked fully, completely on the Memphis Grizzlies. I think they are still too inexperienced. I think they're still too young. I think they're still too, I don't want to say cocky, but maybe a little bit too, you know, uppy, uppy. They're too much, I don't want to say full of themselves either, but like that sort of vibe. Like, I feel like they are a team that if they were up three to nothing on a team in the NBA playoffs, they could lose that series and lose four games straight. Like, that's just my own opinion. I feel like that they're that kind of team. Um, but I, I think they're also a team that could make the conference finals and maybe even make the finals. Like, that's how talented they are when they are locked in. Um, but that's the only thing is that they're not always locked in. I mean, they just lost a couple days ago a game against the Sixers that they were up by, you know, I think at 15 at one point, or maybe even 20. Like, they were up by a pretty decent margin. They lost in, like, the last seconds of the game. So, you know, that's how that team is. They are very wishy-washy. So I'm not very you know, keen on them. Same thing with the, <laughs> with the Sacramento Kings. No offense. The Kings have been my team this year. You guys have heard it before on this channel. I'm not a bandwagon. I, you guys have heard it before. I like the Kings. They're always like a top three, top five favorite team of mine. I, I, I've been to a Kings game before live. Shout out to Demontis Sabonis, one of my favorite players in the NBA. Um, yeah, they, I, I wouldn't bet on them. Their team, I think it, it is pretty good to make the second round right now. They would play Oh, actually, I don't know about them because the other sort of iffy team that we're talking about is the team that they would probably face in the playoffs, which would be the Dallas Mavericks, which you got Kyrie now. Whoa. Um, obviously, you know, Dallas getting any sort of star, all-star, even really, 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 really good player would have been great for this Maverick team, but they got an all-star in Kyrie Irving and... You know, is it the best fit? Definitely not. Um, is it a, a guy? Absolutely yes. And this team desperately needed a guy next to Luca, and they got him. And I'm not sure how well this is going to go. Um, I think they can definitely, you know, win a playoff series this year. I just don't think they're deep enough or have a good fit of guys to really sort of get this squad together. Now next season, though, could be interesting, but in a positive way or a negative way, you could definitely, you know, have a team be built around Kyrie and, and Luka Doncic, and wow, boom, guess what, you have a squad, or there's another road, a very dark, scary road, that Kyrie next season just leaves, and you traded away all your role players for nothing, and you have, I guess, this cap space, but, and a not very free agency class, like, uh, I don't know what you would really do if you're the Mavericks, that happens. And even at that point, you know, if I'm Luka Doncic and I'm seeing, you know, hey, you know, this team can't even keep a star, 
possibility. So, a lot of ifs, a lot of ifs in the West, but just gotta see it happen uh, when it comes to, to injuries. And I think that's sort of the big sort of flag I'd put on the West is who's healthy in the West. <laughs> because, man, the Clippers could win the entire thing uh, if they're fully healthy. You know, talking about them with um, the Suns, if they're fully healthy, I think they probably have the best shot, but. Denver has been on a smooth sail, and right now they are probably the best team in the West, and I think right now probably it's either the Celtics or the Bucks. I mean, the Bucks on a 13-game win streak is insane. They're only one game back from the number one spot, so I don't know if you'd say they're the best team in the East, but obviously the Celtics have the number one spot, so I guess technically they are the best team, but ooh, interesting. But in my opinion, Jake Baller ASMR NBA Finals. I don't really have a pretty Sorry, by the way, if you know my neighbors upstairs, I don't really have a prediction, but if the Nuggets make it the finals, God, I want the Sixers to make the finals so bad. Embiid, Jokic, NBA finals matchup. Oh, God, I would be so happy if the Suns make the finals. Would love to see the Celtics make the finals. Tatum, Katie, Booker, Jalen Brown. You know, Marcus Smart getting in the grill of, of Chris Paul. Man, that's going to be, that would be a crazy finals. Um, any other matchups I can think about? Kind of like a weird one, but like a, a crazy fun one to watch, I think would be Cavs and Grizzlies. Like two kind of young up-and-coming teams, very flashy, guard-heavy, fast-paced, up and down. That'd be pretty fun to watch, but... In my opinion, I, I, Suns and Celtics would probably be the biggest seller. I think that would be the biggest sort of, you know, the NBA would probably rig games for that to happen. Uh, I mean, the Bucks would be great. You know, like Bucks Clippers would be really fun to watch. Even um, Bucks versus Nuggets would be really cool. But yeah, I think probably the Suns and, and Celtics would probably be the biggest seller. I think for the NBA, and I think that'd be also maybe maybe the most fun to watch. But those are kind of my matchup with ropes <laughs> potentials, but if I could pick a team, so I, I can't, like, I, 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 I just can't, I don't think anyone can, uh, I'll just be very happy with it being different teams, no offense to the Warriors, I love you Golden State, you're, you're, you're the Chicago Bulls of this generation, you're the dynasty of this uh, new aged NBA, but <sighs> hopefully you guys don't make the finals. <laughs> Because it'd be really cool to see some other faces, other big time names make it, and I think it'd be kind of cool. Do they have a shot? Technically, yes, but uh, man, a lot of other really good teams in the NBA, so gotta see what happens. Um, I know some people probably want me to talk about the Blazers, which I could talk about for a little bit because I guess I'm a, I guess I'm a Portland fan. Um, you know, really cool. I guess you know what uh, went down. For the trade deadline, I guess you could say, kind of cool. You know, it wasn't like a big time swing for Portland, but they did set up for like a good swing for the off season. They got a lot of draft capital, which is going to be, you know, tradable for whatever Portland decides to do. They got a first round pick from New York, which, by the way, I'm a New York Knicks fan right now because if the Knicks make the playoffs, the Blazers get the Knicks first round pick. I'm a big Knicks fan now, and then getting a bunch of uh, second round picks for. Gary Payton, uh, getting Matisse Thibel from, from the Sixers for kind of nothing, which was really cool. So, I mean, he's a good defender moving forward. I think hopefully the Blazers can keep him developing. Cam Reddish is interesting, but, uh, yeah, Blazers right now are in, 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 in a very interesting spot. Right now, they are currently three games from the sixth seed, which is pretty impressive. Blazers could go on, like, a six-game win streak and, you know, make their way into the playoffs and... You know, have a, a nice little play game, and boom, Portland's in a playoff series. Maybe they go up against Memphis in the first round. You know, you got a, you got a, 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 a puncher's chance, or whatever that saying is. Or they lose, um, you know, seven out of uh, uh, the next whatever many games there are. I know, what I want to say, maybe they, sorry, maybe they only win seven games out of the next however many games are on the season, and, you know, they go on like a crazy bad injury streak, I mean, God, that's already happened for them already, and they're back in the lottery, which I guess is okay, I don't know, man, Portland 
is just in a very weird moratorium where right now it is is the time. Right now is the time. It's either the Blazers shoot up in the rankings and they make the playoff run, or they have a really bad streak and they shut everything down and they they, they start the tank again. Which I would also be with Kevin because uh, this upcoming off season, finally Portland will have the ability to trade first round picks. Oh my God. Shout out to the imbecile that was our last GM, Neil O'Shea, who traded away like, do like four first round picks in like two years to acquire like Larry Nance Jr. and Robert Covington. Like, thanks. I guess Neil O'Shea, but man, that guy. Well, anyways, uh, finally Portland has the ability to trade their first round picks. So now Portland has the ability to trade, you know, X player plus, you know, f three or four first round picks for uh, a, a Y player, you know, a disgruntled star, um, someone who just frees up something, um, even just open up some cap space to sign someone, I don't know, but they finally have first round picks to send out instead of having to, you know, f you know, wiggle around trades and stuff like that. So this off season for Portland will be the make or break it year. Because if, quite honestly, if the Portland Trailblazers are where they are at next season, right now, I think Dame and the team need to have a little sit down and be like, okay, this this is it. it, it, is, it is it is it now? Is it the, this off season? How is Dame feeling? This and that. That's where you can have that have that really tough talk where it's like, okay. Not only if Dame wants to stay or not, as a franchise, you have to say, do we want to keep you around? You know, obviously right now, their mutual want to stay. But I think right now, Dame is the one that wants to stay. And maybe Portland is the team that maybe has to be like, maybe we should, for your own good, let you go. You know what I'm saying? So, oh God. It's going to be tough. Anyways, um, Lakers look good. They could have a playoff run. The Thunder could even stick in there. Um, the Spurs are tanking. Let's go with Manana. Rockets. Let's go with Manana. Pistons. Let's go with Manana. Hornets. Let's go with Manana. The Magic. Could maybe sneak into a playing spot. Maybe at that 10 spot. Um, very interesting. I think the Raptors will probably find themselves more in that in, in that 9 spot. Maybe even roll up to 8. But, yeah. That 10 spot's going to be very interesting with the Wizards, the Bulls, the Patriots, and the Magic. I think those guys are kind of all wheeling and dealing, seeing what happens, but Hordes and Pistons are. Let's go women, Yana. Okay, how about we talk a little bit of uh, some football, some real football, with some Premier League soccer. Um, let me know, by the way, down in the comments, um, obviously, like, what topics you guys like to hear in, in these videos. If you guys just want me to, like, ramble on about different teams, if you guys like me doing, like, a updates or current events, if you guys want me to just do, like, little games, like, you know, pick your teams or start bench cuts, let me know what you guys like in these videos so I can do them for you, not just sort of, like, ramble for an hour. I kind of want to, like, you know, do things, obviously, you guys want to listen to, obviously, like, some triggers, some rambling, but maybe some topics you guys would like. But for you, you know, soccer, football fans, what leagues I should be talking about in this video. So I mostly just talk Premier League because I know they're kind of like popular. No, they're like a lot of like the, the UK people uh, like, you know, watching these videos. And obviously some big time soccer fans obviously watch these as well. And fans of the channel. So I don't know what sort of league you guys want me to sort of cover. I just do Premier League because they're the Premier League. So you kind of just uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys want to be listening to. Going over the standings for the Premier League, we have uh, still at number one, Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal at number one, Man City number two, Man United at number three, Tottenham Hotspurs number four, Newcastle five, Fulham six, Liverpool the seventh, Brighton at eighth, Brentford at ninth, tenth is Chelsea, eleventh is uh, Aston Villa. Uh, Crystal Palace is 12th, Forest is 13th, um, you keep going down, blah blah blah, then you have the <laughs> regulation teams with uh, Everton, Bournemouth, and Southampton down in regulation, dun dun dun, very scary, I know, I know, I know, 
Arsenal, Man City, Man United, and the Tottenham Hotspurs are all looking pretty good. It really seems like kind of like a two-man race for number one with Arsenal and Man City. Arsenal has 57 points. Man City has 55. Arsenal has 18 wins. Man City has 17. I guess Man United could also catch up and maybe even Tottenham, but those two teams are really sort of neck and neck with each other right now. Um, I still have yet to really watch like a full game live. I think I cut, I cut one game. I think it was last week I watched one because it was a weekend game and it started at like 11 a.m. and I watched like the end of it, which was a lot of fun, but I still just watch highlights. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, oh my, oh my god, are you still watching? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Are you catching up? Like, all I really have been doing is just I'll, I'll go on, see what games are being played, and I'll watch the highlights of the game kind of the extent that I get into it. Um, it's really hard for me, again, to just, to, you know, watch a game at, like, 8 a.m. when, you know, I'm barely waking up around that time and or sometimes it'll slip my mind because, like, at the end of the match, I guess I could technically watch, but, again, I'm not waking up and thinking the first thing on my head, football. Maybe some people are. But, um, yeah. Let's see. We still have a couple more months of good football play though it seems like the Premier League goes in place on through May which is kind of exciting so I'll get to have a lot more time to talk about it and get a little bit more into it um we also have of course the Champions League which uh you know group A B C D E F G and H are all going at it uh, Man City right now in group G uh, May, uh Real Madrid leading in group F Chelsea leading in Group E, Tottenham, Group D, Bayern Munich in Group C, um, at Napoli in Group A, it's kind of cool, uh, PSG right now is in second in Group H, uh, to the number one spot, Benfica, ben Benfica, I have never heard of that <laughs> team ever in my life, but, uh, PSG not number one, very sad to see, but, uh, pretty fun looking like that for the for the Champions League. It's look like it's uh, looking uh, pretty pretty good. And just a couple of like uh, current events. Uh, Crystal Palace and Liverpool played. I guess that'd be yesterday for you guys. Uh, they, they played. They, they tied zero zero. Very boring. One of the biggest parts I hate about regular season uh, football tying. I hate that. Uh, Man City beat Bournemouth 4 to 1. Very high scoring team, uh, very high scoring game. Uh, Leeds beat Southampton. Aston Villa beats Everton. West Ham smashes Forest 4 to nothing. Very cool. Arsenal beats Le Leicester. Or Leicester. Someone in the comments one time told me how to pronounce it. I, I, I already forgot it, but they only beat them by one goal, which kind of scary, not gonna lie. Wow, there were actually a lot of games on yesterday. Oh my god. Uh, Real Madrid tied with Atletico. That's pretty interesting. Really need to see some Real Madrid. Um, highlights, I haven't really been seeing a whole lot of them, to be completely honest. Anything else going on? Uh, no, honestly, a team I also need to see play, like a full game, would be PSG. I'd actually really like to see Mbappe play again. I haven't seen him play since... Um, the uh, uh, the World Cup, World, 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 World Cup. I haven't seen him play since the World Cup. And then, like I was talking about earlier, the MLS season is starting up, which is also pretty exciting. I think a lot of teams started. I think they started yesterday or sometime this week. The season starts, I think, um, which is pretty exciting. Not gonna lie. Um, like I said, Portland Timbers. Not the biggest fan. I do have a uh, Portland Timbers Mickey Mouse uh, Disney collectible pin. If you guys know what, what pin trading is, I have a pin of Mickey Mouse with uh, the Portland Timbers jersey on, which is kind of dope. But um, that's the extent of it. Um, I went to a Portland Timbers game in middle school, which is a very long time ago. That was the first game I ever went to. And the last game I ever went to, so like, God, like 10 years ago, I think I went to a Portland Timber. 
first game like it was a long time ago so um yeah i'm definitely going to a game i don't know what game i'm gonna look at tickets and see what's like a good time to go definitely not going anytime soon uh your boy's not trying to get another cold because it is freezing and rainy right now i might wait till like the springtime so like maybe like I'll try to go to a game. I'm not going to go in March. I think I might be still kind of chilly. Maybe I'll try and sort of check the temperature every once in a while. Catch some late, late, late second tickets, but most likely in April, I'll try to go to, go to a game and, uh, yeah, take you guys along with me because I know you guys are very really excited to see that. Um, hiking videos for sure. Uh, the Portland Zoo. I don't know if you guys are obviously probably not a lot of you are from Portland, but I could take you guys to the Portland Zoo. It's actually pretty, pretty, pretty. It's a pretty, pretty zoo, and uh, that could be fun to go along some hikes, uh, hikes, 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 hikes around Portland. Could also be pretty fun. Um, and I'm also planning uh, sometime in the spring to see my family down in California again. You guys know I always try to visit them at least one time a year. Uh, um, very much miss them a lot, so I kind of want to see them kind of soon. So, you know, Disneyland, IRL video, um, you know, maybe go to a, a, a Clipper game if they're in the playoffs, maybe the Lakers, if they are in the playoffs, but probably a Clipper game if they make the playoffs. And, geez, maybe I could do, like, I don't know, go to, like, a Dodgers baseball game, or, obviously, you know, Padres are going to be there, Angels are going to be there, the Angels are, like, my family team, so that's probably the most likely one, but that'd be kind of cool to go to, like, a Dodgers game, right? I don't know if there's, like, a lot of baseball Dodger fans out there, but maybe I should do a poll on Dodgers, Angels, or Padres, which which game would you guys most like to, to see, to watch, to see the arena, the atmosphere, the fans, watch a game to see what's going on um and man I, I love doing IRL videos like IRL videos are like they're almost like my new passion like I kind of want this channel to be more about being you know IRL creativity outside like doing stuff like that like that's like my new thing that I love to do on the channel like obviously like oh Jake Baller, the sports guy, like, that's cool, I guess, like, honestly, that, that shtick is kind of getting old, to be completely honest, like, I love talking sports, I love sports, but, like, I've been doing it for kind of a long time, so it's really cool to have something else be a part of the channel, and, like, dude, the IRL videos, I love, I love, 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 love doing IRL, it's a lot of fun, so thank you guys for letting me do that, and I think definitely doing something like that could be pretty cool. And obviously with the LA Kings video that I just did, which by the way, um, <laughs> you know, uh, didn't do all that well performance-wise. Um, it kind of hurts, it kind of stings my heart a little bit that that video didn't do that well. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, so I, I think I'm going to continue doing it. And by it, I mean like traveling to doing other, um, you know, sporting events, you know, maybe, you know, obviously the biggest one would be, like, flying to New York City and going to a Knicks game, I think that's probably, like, number one on the list, or I could do any place, I could go to a football game in Kansas City, I could, I don't know, go to a, a Houston Astros baseball game, uh, I don't know, I'll fly overseas and go to a football match, a real football match overseas in the UK, I think that'd be sick, that'd be awesome, so, and obviously if you guys support the, the IRL videos and that kind of stuff, I'll, I'll keep doing bigger and better ones, you, know, you guys have seen me already do one in, in a Super Bowl stadium at SoFi, so, I mean, I think we could still do them better, and, you know, I definitely want to record them a little bit better too, I want to be a little bit more confident in my filming, most of the time you guys see me, I film like very scared and like I'm like camera to my chest like kind of scared I kind of want to like you know be a little bit better maybe well actually I can't even bring those into a stadium I was about to say I could I could buy like a, a stabilizer make the, the make the filming look, look a little bit better but I can't bring those into arenas which sucks so I don't know how, 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 how I would do that but you know I think I could make them a little bit could be kind of fun and obviously like adding in like more of the ASMR in public part to things like obviously I do ASMR in public like yeah I'm bringing you guys out into public in an ASMR atmosphere but I want 
to try uh, doing ASMR in public, like tapping, scratching, doing some stuff, visual ASMR, tracing, like actually doing ASMR while I'm out in public. Um, I think that'd be easier just obviously with around, being around people, it's kind of still kind of a, I don't want to say it's cringy, but like it's really hard to do, honestly, with people being around, especially, you know, hundreds of people being around you. Um, it's kind of tough to do, so maybe like definitely the, the hiking one, that's going to be some uh, prime sounds in that video, but yeah, sports, a lot of IRL uh, potential with that. Wow, that's a tangent. I did not uh, think we were going to go down. Anyways, MLS. Kind of excited to go to a Portland Timbers game, and maybe I'll watch some, ML M I'll watch some MLS games this year. Because, um, yeah, yesterday there were a lot of games. Uh, like, Atlanta United beat the Earthquakes. Kind of interesting. No idea where they're from. That's really cool. Uh, the Timbers did not play, though, but I think they might play, let's see, no, 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 no. Uh, MLS, uh, nope, today the Sounders, the Seattle Sounders play the Rapids, which I guess are, are another team I could go see play live, the Sounders, I think they play in the, um, Seattle Seahawks Arena, I think they do, that'd be kind of interesting to see. coming up fairly soon, which, yes, your boy will be making videos on March, 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 March Madness, yes. Something that I'm going to be slowly revving myself into is some watching college basketball. Um, I think March Madness starts in about two weeks, so I think next week the conference, like, uh, tournaments start happening, like obviously like Pac-12 and you know all those like big time, you know conferences have their tournaments to punch the ticket to the winners to the March Madness tournament, and they start actually you know making the guys and things like that, making the brackets. I'm gonna start watching a lot more college basketball in probably about a week or so, so that's kind of exciting. Right now, the uh, current rankings for the uh, NCAA men's basketball are the university. Of Houston at number one. Yes, Houston is number one with a record of 27, 27, 20, 20, 27, and two. That's that's pretty wild. I'm not gonna lie. Good for Houston. Never really would have expected them to be super crazy. Again, if you're like a Houston fan or just really into college basketball, let me know some players I should be looking out for. Um, obviously, all I really know about is you no know, Scoot Henderson, but those guys don't even really play. In, 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 they don't play college basketball, so I'd like to know some college basketball uh, names. It'd be great down in the comments. We also got Alabama at number two, Kansas at number three, one of my favorite college basketball teams, um, UCLA at number four, 15 and 0 at home. That's pretty crazy. Uh, Purdue at five, which I think the last time we did uh, some talking about college basketball, they were th the number one team in the nation. Virginia six and my team, the Arizona Wildcats, are down to seven. <sighs> uh, I like I like them this year. Uh, obviously, this year they don't have like a, like a Ben Matherin, like a go to go to guy on the perimeter. They have a couple good bigs, uh, which is great. That's always good to have, but it kind of does take me off. They don't have like a go to perimeter guy. Like again, last year Ben Matherin was on a tear during his tournament run, but would have been good to have him on there this current year. Uh, we have Texas at 8, Baylor 9th, Marquette at 10th. Okay, Marquette. Good little revival for them. Uh, Tennessee 11th. I know there's some Tennessee fans out there. Gonzaga 12th. I will never believe in Gonzaga ever. Uh, Miami 13th, Kansas State 14th, St. Mary's at 15th. Okay, St. Mary's. Any other sort of... Oh, they have Northwestern uh, 21st. Interesting. Then you have San Diego State 22nd, Texas A&M at 25. You know, not not terribly bad, I'm not going to lie. Um, I could go conference to conference, though, but that, that'll definitely take some some time, but wow, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see some, some tournament play. That's usually when I start watching. 
it's it's still very new to me and still kind of confusing. Um, really excited to watch more games, watch more highlights. I think that's always going to be a lot of fun. Um, NBA playoffs are about to start. March Madness about to start. A lot of basketball starting to pick up now, which is going to be great uh, for you if you're a basketball fan. Me for the channel, everything. Pretty nice. Um, yeah. I guess I also could have talked to some hockey since I did just go to a hockey game, which. Uh, I will say it was a lot of fun. Did it did it make me a hockey fan? Not necessarily. I thought it was fun, but I still know so little about hockey. I I, I still could not name like a hockey player right now. I swear to God, on everything I couldn't name one hockey player. I think Crosby was it was someone or is someone. I'm not entirely sure, but still not the biggest fan of hockey, but I love watching, I think it's a super fun live event, and oh my god, the Las Vegas Knights, man, they know how to put on a show, because that was one of the best in arena atmospheres I have ever been a part of, that was a lot of fun, um, but, um, let's see, let's do this really quick, uh, in the Eastern Conference, the Bruins are against Devils, Maple Leafs and Lightning are the top five teams, in, in the West, you have the Golden Knights at number one, Let's go. That's pretty dope. Uh, the Dallas Stars at two. LA Kings at three. I guess you could technically call them my team or like my favorite team. But even then, like, I don't know. I don't really want to, uh, you know, go on the, the Golden Knights bandwagon. But I did just go see them live. So I do kind of like them a little bit. Uh, the Oilers and the Avalanche at five. Uh, the Anaheim Ducks are in dead last of the entire NHL. Or I guess also there with the Blue Jackets, which it's kind of sad. I hope one day the Ducks are good. They, they're, they're the Mighty Ducks, man. They're Disney's team. <sighs> Very sad, but I, I do plan on going to probably a Seattle Kraken game sometime this season, maybe even next season. Because, man, going to a hockey game was, was a lot of fun, so definitely plan on doing that again. But anyways, a lot of sports talk today, a lot of rambling today, a lot of basketball talking today. Um, again, let me know definitely down in the comments what topics you guys want me to talk about. rambling about sports you guys like to me to talk about like current events you guys want me to talk about you know like games if you want to call them games like uh star bench cuts uh big ones or this or that's about certain topics i think i could be kind of fun to do that 